Thanks to several of my computer-savvy supporters helping scour the Internet Archive, we have now found and can present Robin Kofid's article, The Dinosaurs Never Existed, from his deleted GVE News website. If anyone watching this has not already seen my more comprehensive and conclusive documentary, Evolution and Dinosaurs Debunked, please stop this video and watch that one first. Link in the description box. In this video, I will reveal one of the greatest hoaxes in human history. But first, a short explanation of what we're dealing with. Paleontology. The study of the origin and development of life. Paleontology is the study of life's formation and development. The paleontological scientific approach is explained on Wikipedia as follows. Quote, When attempting to explain earlier phenomena, paleontologists and other scientists of history construct a set of hypotheses addressing the causes and then look for a smoking gun, a piece of evidence that indicates that one hypothesis is a better explanation than others. Sometimes the smoking gun is discovered by happy coincidence during another investigation. This explanation is entirely consistent with the way paleontology works in practice, but it should be obvious to anyone capable of critical thinking that the paleontological establishment can control which hypotheses will be constructed. This is done through textbooks and the curriculum. In this way, Students are brainwashed into a pseudo-reality controlled by the text material and the teacher's authority. A short practical example. A random dental bone is found at an excavation site, and from this dental bone, the rest of the skeleton is guessed at. We are not kidding about this. The entire dinosaurian field of the paleontological program is a sham. It was the English paleontologist Richard Owen who in 1842 coined the term dinosaur. The phenomenon was then gradually promoted in the mainstream press all over the world, which told of these dinosaur creatures, including the Danish press. In 1854, a few years after the word dinosaur was invented and the concept presented in popular articles in the biggest American newspapers, the first dinosaur was discovered in North America by fossil hunter Ferdinand Vandeveer Hayden. There had been no reported discoveries of even a single dinosaur bone in North America prior to 1854, but that didn't stop the paleontologists. In the following period, finding dinosaur bones suddenly became a popular pastime. North America became home to the most ferocious and was a true wonderland to dinosaur bone hunters. According to The Dinosaur Project, a book by paleontological dig journalist Wayne Grady, the ensuing dinosaur rush in North America after 1854 was a mecca for dinosaur bone fraud. The book describes the years from 1870 to 1880 as a period in North America where, quote, some of the most underhanded shenanigans in the history of science were conducted. This decade has since been dubbed Bone Wars, when the notorious Edward Drinker Cope and Othniel Charles Marsh fought each other in their quest to find the most interesting dinosaurs. Most people believe that dinosaur skeletons displayed in museums consist of real dinosaur bones. This is not the case. Paleontologist, advisor for Steven Spielberg in the making of Jurassic Park, host of the Discovery Channel's documentaries about dinosaurs, Don Lessam, defends this practice by claiming that dinosaur bones are too rare to put on display. Quote, in museums, bones are cleaned and cast, and the copies attached to one another to make skeletons. The real bone is too rare to put out on display. The real bones are incarcerated in thick vaults to which only a few select, highly placed researchers hold a key, which means that no independent researcher has ever handled a Tyrannosaurus rex bone. When people unaffiliated with the paleontological establishment attempt to gain access in order to study these dinosaur bones, they are met with refusal upon refusal. The world of movies and paleontology are like Siamese twins. People's view on the existence of dinosaurs is based not on firm evidence, but on Hollywood-fixated artistic impressions. 
Documentaries colorfully illustrate each dinosaur's characteristics like colors, weight, and muscle mass, but Don Lessam admits that this is pure guesswork. Consider, for instance, the question of how much these dinosaurs weigh. Says Don Lessam, quote, Scientists don't know how much dinosaurs weighed. They don't like to make those estimates because they don't have enough information, but everyone wants them to guess. Overall, several millions of dollars have been spent promoting the existence of dinosaurs through movies, TV, magazines, and comics. The Land Before Time, Jurassic Park, BBC's various dinosaur documentaries, etc. National Geographic, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch's News Corp. News Corp also owns 20th Century Fox, the makers of the Ice Age franchise. Universal Studios, who made Jurassic Park and The Land Before Time. These productions are owned by Comcast, whose main shareholders include J.P. Morgan and the Rothschild-owned investment company Vanguard. Discovery Channel is owned by Discovery Communications, who also distribute BBC's TV shows. N.M. Rothschild and Sons Limited are financial advisors to Discovery Communications. According to Don Lessam, it is not unthinkable to assume that only around 2,100 dinosaur bone sets have been discovered worldwide, and out of these, only 15 incomplete Tyrannosaurus rex bone sets have been found. These dinosaur bone sets have never formed a complete skeleton, but from these incomplete bone sets, paleontologists have constructed a hypothesis about the appearance of the whole skeleton, which they have then modeled in plastic. If thousands of long necks and large carnivorous reptiles had really roamed Earth, we wouldn't only have found 2,100 dinosaur bone sets, but millions of bones, with ordinary people tripping over them when digging in their vegetable patches. Discoveries seem not to be made by disinterested people like farmers, hikers, military personnel, miners, construction workers building cellars or laying down pipes, but rather by people with a special interest, like paleontologists, scientists, university professors, and museum employees, who are actively seeking dinosaur bones or who have studied dinosaurs previously. Discoveries are often made in connection with special dinosaur bone hunting trips and expeditions. The following quotes are from an article from the Natural History Museum in the state of Wisconsin in the USA. The article is called A Fossil's Trail from Excavation to Exhibit, and covers the conservation of fossils and bones. It is written by former bone and fossil inspector for Milwaukee Public Museum, Rolf Johnson. GVE News has tracked Rolf Johnson to his current position as paleontological head of education for the state of Virginia. An attempt has since been made to remove the article from the internet, but GVE News has discovered an exact copy of the online version, which also exists in print. Quote, Most of the curious visitors are only dimly aware of the road taken by paleontologists in their search through the fossil record. In the article, Rolf Johnson tells of his first day of working with these bones. Quote, My romantic image had to be slightly modified when I finally saw the crates full of crumbling and broken bones, each one wrapped in a protective plastic field jacket, the whole lot looking like so many arms and legs from a broken bone seminar. Like many people, I was naive regarding what a fossil might look like or what state it might be in prior to seeing it in the theatrical setting of painted murals and museum exhibits. Fossil vertebrate remains are generally broken, often crushed and distorted, fragmentary and usually incomplete. He continues, It is truly the uncommon or rare specimen that is exhibit quality. Through mold-making and casting, we can totally fabricate limbs, ribs, vertebrae, etc., for the missing pieces of an articulated skeletal mount. Plaster, fiberglass, and epoxies are often and commonly used. In reconstruction work on single bones, small to large cracks can be filled in with mache or plaster mixed with dextrin, a starch that imparts an adhesive quality and extra hardness to regular molding plaster. We've also had success using epoxy putties. Large missing fragments can be sculpted directly in place with these same materials. 
If one conducts a simple Google search for dinosaur and bones, the result numbers several thousand websites. Pictures from museums of large, beautiful dinosaur skeletons appear in brownish red and sometimes snow-white colors, with a touch of having been buried in the ground for decades. But if one were to change direction, and search instead for information about dinosaur replica bones, the results would have a markedly different character. Semi-professional and professional fossil and bone manufacturers talk openly about the ease with which these fakes are produced. Check out, for example, www.trexskulls.com, where all manner of fake bones can be ordered. Or look at www.dinosaurcorporation.com slash dinosaurskulls.html, where even more can be found. In 1999, National Geographic magazine was busted when they presented, in a colorful and fancily presented article, The Missing Link an Archaeoraptor dinosaur, which was supposed to support the basic tenet of evolutionary theory, that dinosaurs had slowly developed over millions of years. Their proof consisted of a fossil, where carefully arranged bone imprints gave the impression of a creature half dinosaur and half bird. The scam was discovered during a CT scan, which uncovered unnatural bone links, National Geographic magazine was later forced to admit, when pressured, that the fossil was man-made. For 116 years, the fake ichthyosaur dinosaur hung in the hall of the National Museum of Wales. In spite of more than a hundred years of revolutions in the field of paleontology, the museum finally came clean after criticism from independent researchers, thanks to the internet, who had publicly revealed that the fossil which had supposedly been found in 1809, was man-made. It had previously, in 1884, graced the home of a very rich businessman. Hadrosaurus folki, or simply Hadrosaurus, was the first dinosaur to be publicly displayed. It is also an official symbol of the state of New Jersey. What few Americans are aware of, however, is that its skull caused big problems for the museum director and the leading paleontologists, because there was no skull, the skull being the main evidence for the existence of this creature. A visual and a sculptural artist were promptly hired to invent a skull, and from the illustrations of another artist who had depicted the Iguanodon, the two artists drew the same face for the Hadrosaurus Fulci. The people involved could now technically defend the existence of this dinosaur. If someone were to ask, the stunt worked out so well, and fooled the public so thoroughly, that they could later change the head of the creature to that of both the Gryposaurus and the Brachylopasaurus without anyone noticing. By complicating the constructed hypothesis process, the paleontological approach, no one would dare question the paleontologist's technical knowledge. To this day, Hadrosaurus Fulci is on display at the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia. The bones are said to be kept behind heavy closed doors, but a plaster copy is exhibited in their place. China is a major producer of bones and fossils. Zigong Dino Ocean Art Company Limited, in the state of Sichuan, is a major supplier to the natural history museums all over the world. On its website, the firm writes, Over 62% of our output goes to American and European markets, which means we will understand and are familiar with the intricacies and regulation of exporting to these regions. Since we are a partner of dinosaur museums, so all products are made under the guidance of experts of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. We have gained a global sales network reaching the USA, Brazil, France, Poland, Russia, Germany, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Thailand, Indonesia, etc., exhibited in Peru, Argentina, Vancouver, Cincinnati, Chicago, and other places. General instructions for the process of manufacturing fossils can be found online. Chicken, frog, dog, cat, horse, and pig's bones are used as fossil materials. The bones are crushed and mixed with glue, resin, and plaster, and can then, if desired, be glued to a plate. Fractures in the fossil give it a natural look. These fractures are purposefully made 
and then repaired repeatedly to achieve the right effect. Even professors of paleontology have started to wonder. Alan Fiducia, professor of paleontology at the University of North Carolina, stated, I have heard there is a fake fossil factory in northeast China, in Liaoning province, near the deposits where many of these recent alleged feather dinosaurs were found. In conclusion, 1. A complete dinosaur skeleton has never been found. 2. No independent researcher has seen a real dinosaur skull. 3. The paleontological scientific approach is built on hypotheses while it is presented as natural science with an objective approach. 4. Children are taught the existence of dinosaurs through cartoons, not through bone inspection at school. 5. Only people with a special interest in the paleontological field seem to find dinosaur bones. Dinosaurs are yet another fictitious reality, exactly like the self-invented psychiatric diagnoses. This all leaves us with numerous fundamental questions.